Oh, shoestring here. Today we're going to do a video because I've had several requests asking me about different ways to power your devices using a simple solar powered system. We're going to talk about that today. First, let me show you what we have. We have a simple charge controller, one of the very inexpensive ones. Just like you see here, this is another one. It's blue. They also come in orange, white. They all pretty much look the same, and they work the same. So I'm going to use these because they're the most common, and they're also the most inexpensive. So let me show you what we have here. Right now with this one, as you can see from the bottom, we have wires that go to the solar panel. You can see a picture of the panel right there. I already have that hooked up to this little solar panel. Just using this for demonstration purposes. We're going to take it, set it over here in the sun. You can see from the charge controller itself, there's a picture of the solar panel. It's going to the battery. The battery is at 12.9 or 13.0. Once it gets all the way to 13, it will settle. So, charge controller connected to the solar panel which is, you can see the charge. The other is the battery right here, also connected to this battery. It's a small Harbor Freight 12 volt, 35 amp hour Thunderbolt. Also, like the other two items, fairly inexpensive. This is a AGM battery. Also, you'll, they'll be called sealed batteries. A lot of different names for these that function about the same. We're talking about powering devices. And that's what we're going to start. That's why I started out with the charge controller. The basic principle, of course, is the sun goes in the solar panel. Solar panel converts the sunlight into energy, which charges up your battery. You don't want your battery to overcharge and get hot and explode. So the charge controller does just that. It controls the charge to make sure it stays under a certain amount. And that's what we're doing here charging up the battery through the sun. But with the charge controller, you can also, you can power them. And that's what we're going to talk about now is powering. Two different ways. The first way, of course, is with the USB. Take my small cell phone here, hook it to the USB port, give the phone a chance to start up. Now, when you do this, you're taking power directly from the battery. So remember that you are draining the battery as you do this. Give it a chance to come on. So you can see it's actually working. So I turned it off first. Go through all these little steps. And as you can see from right here, you can see up there where the little battery indicator shows that it's charging. So it's actually charging off the USB from the charge controller. That's one way to power a device. Let me unplug it. Actually, the next way I'm just going to talk about, and that's going to be your load. A lot of questions about load. I don't use the load because I have no reason to. But if you have a device that's directly DC and you want to wire it in here, you could wire it right in here, plus and minus, just like the other ones, and your load will run. Now... There's three different ways you can set this up. In fact, I can get show you the instructions right here because all these are instructions for these charge controllers are pretty much the same. So you can set it up where it'll output for 24 hours. It will run all the time. You can have it set up for sunset and close after sun hours, or you can do dust to dawn. You can also program it to do Pacific hours. You could have it, tell it to run 15 hours. You could rel it, tell it to run 12 all you have to do is go down to where it's actually talking about the device itself. There you see 12 and you see an H. You hold that down. Well, we'll go back to it. You hold that down till it starts blinking. And now you can move it around. It says 12 hours. You can change it to any of those that you want to by pushing up or down. So there, now it will run three hours. Just like that. 
and you can do any of the settings that way if you want to use the load. Now the load will run off the solar panel as long as the sun is hitting it. Once the sun stops hitting it, it will drain your battery. So if you're using it for like dust to dawn, then when the sun hits it in the morning, it will the, activate the charge controller to let it know it's getting charged and whatever your devices will come on. And then when the sun goes off the solar panel and then the charge controller s detects that there is no, no charge coming in from the solar panel, it will turn it off. When the sun is touching the solar panels, it will go to the charge controller and the charge controller will detect it. And then, of course, activate your device. As you can see right now, it jumps back and forth from 12.9 to 13.0 because the uh, sun is hitting that little bitty panel and it's trying to charge this up. Also, these little ones here, it specifically says in the manual, so I should tell you that. Do not use it on... Oh, well, let's not use Chinese. Let's find the English. It specifically says do not use it for... Uh, lithium batteries, not suitable for nickel, hydrogen, lithium, ion, and other such batteries. Now, a lot of people do because I can program it to do whatever the charge is needed for a lithium battery, like normally 14.6. Right now, I have this set up at 14, as you can see, at 14.1, because that's what I charge up my AGM batteries with. But I do want to mention that to you. You must be careful. And these are cheap, cheap, cheap charge controllers. I don't trust them. I use them, but only when I can keep an eye on them. I never leave them alone for too long, and I never let them charge for a long time when I'm not watching them. So cheap, inexpensive. They work, but please be very, very careful with these. Okay? So let's talk about some other ways to power our devices. And for that, we're going to unplug our char un charge controller. First, we unplug the solar panel first. And now we have this little small 200 watt power inverter. 200 watt power inverter. Another small, inexpensive one. Shoestring does unexpen inexpensive things when possible. I won't plug it in. Okay, now it's hooked. Let me show you how. Takes the red and goes to the red on the battery. Black goes to the black on the battery. Just wire it up to the back of the device. Turn it on. Comes on. Nice and easy. Use an example of this little lamp. Plug it in. Turn the lamp on. It comes on. And that's how easy it is to power a device with the inverter. You can also take devices that run off USBs and do the same thing as you did with the charge controller. You can do with this right to the USB. And they'll both take the power directly from the battery. Take a little phone. Plug it in. Comes on. And once again, you can see right here with the battery symbol, it is charging. Just like it did on the charge controller. Also, you can take, for instance, depending on what you need to power, a little cigarette lighter device here. Plug it in. Right there. I don't have anything at the moment that I want to plug this into, but I could connect that to the inverter the exact same way and run a device with cigarette lighter. Just like you would if you were inside your car. Okay, so I hope that explains some of the ways you can power your devices with a charging system like this off the sun. Uh, if you like these videos, please like and subscribe, share it with your friends, and shoestring out.